The anthropic principle is the philosophical consideration that observations of the universe must be compatible with the conscious and sapient life that observes it. Some proponents of the anthropic principle reason that it explains why the universe has the age and the fundamental physical constants necessary to accommodate conscious life. As a result, they believe it is unremarkable that the universe's fundamental constants happen to fall within the narrow range thought to be compatible with life. The strong anthropic principle as explained by John D. Barrow and Frank Tipler states that this is all the case because the universe is compelled to eventually have conscious and sapient life emerge within it. Some critics of the SAP argue in favor of a weak anthropic principle similar to the one defined by Brandon Carter, which states that the universe's ostensible fine-tuning is the result of selection bias, i.e., only in a universe capable of eventually supporting life will there be living beings capable of observing and reflecting upon fine-tuning. Most often such arguments draw upon some notion of the multiverse for there to be a statistical population of universes to select from and from which selection bias could occur. Definition and Basis The principle was formulated as a response to a series of observations that the laws of nature and parameters of the universe take on values that are consistent with conditions for life as we know it rather than a set of values that would not be consistent with life on Earth. The anthropic principle states that this is a necessity, because if life were impossible, no living entity would be there to observe it, and thus would not be known. That is, it must be possible to observe some universe, and hence, the laws and constants of any such universe must accommodate that possibility. The term anthropic in anthropic principle has been argued to be a misnomer. While singling out our kind of carbon-based life, none of the finely tuned phenomena require human life or some kind of carbon chauvinism. Any form of life or any form of heavy atom, stone, star or galaxy would do, nothing specifically human or anthropic is involved. The anthropic principle has given rise to some confusion and controversy partly because the phrase has been applied to several distinct ideas. All versions of the principle have been accused of discouraging the search for a deeper physical understanding of the universe. The anthropic principle is often criticized for lacking falsifiability and therefore critics of the anthropic principle may point out that the anthropic principle is a non-scientific concept. Even though the weak anthropic principle, conditions that are observed in the universe must allow the observer to exist, is easy to support in mathematics and philosophy, i.e., it is a tautology or truism. However, building a substantive argument based on a tautological foundation is problematic. Stronger variants of the anthropic principle are not tautologies and thus make claims considered controversial by some and that are contingent upon empirical verification. Anthropic Coincidences In 1961, Robert Dicker noted that the age of the universe, as seen by living observers, cannot be random. Instead, biological factors constrain the universe to be more or less in a golden age, neither too young nor too old. If the universe were one-tenth as old as its present age, there would not have been sufficient time to build up appreciable levels of metallicity especially carbon, by nuclear synthesis. Small rocky planets did not yet exist. If the universe were ten times older than it actually is, most stars would be too old to remain on the main sequence and would have turned into white dwarfs, aside from the dimmest red dwarfs, and stable planetary systems would have already come to an end. Thus, Dicker explained the coincidence between large dimensionless numbers constructed from the constants of physics and the age of the universe a coincidence which had inspired Dirac's varying G-theory. Dicker later reasoned that the density of matter in the universe must be almost exactly the critical density needed to prevent the Big Crunch. The most recent measurements may suggest that the observed density of baryonic matter, and some theoretical predictions of the amount of dark matter account for about 30% of this critical density. 
with the rest contributed by a cosmological constant. Steven Weinberg gave an anthropic explanation for this fact. He noted that the cosmological constant has a remarkably low value, some 120 orders of magnitude smaller than the value particle physics predicts. However, if the cosmological constant were only one order of magnitude larger than its observed value, the universe would suffer catastrophic inflation, which would preclude the formation of stars, and hence life. The observed values of the dimensionless physical constants governing the four fundamental interactions are balanced as if fine-tuned to permit the formation of commonly found matter and subsequently the emergence of life. A slight increase in the strong interaction would bind the dineutron and the diproton, and nuclear fusion would have converted all hydrogen in the early universe to helium. Water, as well as sufficiently long-lived stable stars, both essential for the emergence of life as we know it, would not exist. More generally, small changes in the relative strengths of the four fundamental interactions can greatly affect the universe's age, structure, and capacity for life. Origin The phrase, anthropic principle, first appeared in Brandon Carter's contribution to a 1973 crack of symposium honoring Copernicus's 500th birthday. Carter, a theoretical astrophysicist, articulated the anthropic principle in reaction to the Copernican principle, which states that humans do not occupy a privileged position in the universe. As Carter said, although our situation is not necessarily central, it is inevitably privileged to some extent, specifically. Carter disagreed with using the Copernican principle to justify the perfect cosmological principle, which states that all large regions and times in the universe must be statistically identical. The latter principle underlay the steady state theory, which had recently been falsified by the 1965 discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation. This discovery was unequivocal evidence that the universe has changed radically over time. Carter defined two forms of the anthropic principle, a wick, one which referred only to anthropic selection of privileged space-time locations in the universe, and a more controversial, strong, form which addressed the values of the fundamental constants of physics. Roger Penrose explained the weak form as follows. The argument can be used to explain why the conditions happen to be just right for the existence of life on the Earth at the present time, for if they were not just right, then we should not have found ourselves to be here now, but somewhere else, at some other appropriate time. This principle was used very effectively by Brandon Carter and Robert Dicker to resolve an issue that had puzzled physicists for a good many years. The issue concerned various striking numerical relations that are observed to hold between the physical constants. A puzzling aspect of this was that some of the relations hold only at the present epoch in the Earth's history, so we appear, coincidentally, to be living at a very special time. This was later explained, by Carter and Dicker, by the fact that this epoch coincided with the lifetime of what are called main sequence stars such as the Sun, at any other epoch, so the argument ran. There would be no intelligent life around in order to measure the physical constants in question, so the coincidence had to hold, simply because there would be intelligent life around only at the particular time that the coincidence did hold. The Emperor's New Mind Chapter 10 One reason this is plausible is that there are many other places and times in which we can imagine finding ourselves. But when applying the strong principle, we only have one universe with one set of fundamental parameters. So what exactly is the point being made? Carter offers two possibilities. First, we can use our own existence to make predictions about the parameters. But second, as a last resort, we can convert these predictions into explanations by assuming that there is more than one universe. In fact a large and possibly infinite collection of universes, something that is now called the multiverse, in which the parameters vary across universes. 
The strong principle then becomes an example of a selection effect, exactly analogous to the weak principle. Postulating a multiverse is certainly a radical step, but taking it could provide at least a partial answer to a question which had seemed to be out of the reach of normal science. Why do the fundamental laws of physics take the particular form we observe in not another? Since Carter's 1973 paper, the term anthropic principle has been extended to cover a number of ideas which differ in important ways from those he espoused. Particular confusion was caused in 1986 by the book The Anthropic Cosmological Principle by John D. Barrow and Frank Tipler published that year which distinguished between weak and strong anthropic principle in a way very different from Carter's. As discussed in the next section, Carter was not the first to invoke some form of the anthropic principle. In fact, the evolutionary biologist Alfred Russell Wallace anticipated the anthropic principle as long ago as 1904. Such a vast and complex universe as that which we know exists around us may have been absolutely required in order to produce a world that should be precisely adapted in every detail for the orderly development of life culminating in man. In 1957, Robert Dicker wrote, The age of the universe now is not random but conditioned by biological factors. Changes in the values of the fundamental constants of physics would preclude the existence of man to consider the problem variance. Weak anthropic principle. We must be prepared to take account of the fact that our location in the universe is necessarily privileged to the extent of being compatible with our existence as observers. Note that for Carter, location refers to our location in time as well as space. Strong anthropic principle. The universe must be such as to admit the creation of observers within it at some stage. To paraphrase Descartes, Cogito ergo mundus talis est, the Latin tag makes it clear that must indicates a deduction from the fact of our existence. The statement is thus a truism. In their 1986 book, The Anthropic Cosmological Principle, John Barrow and Frank Tipler depart from Carter and define the WAP in SAP as follows. Weak anthropic principle. The observed values of all physical and cosmological quantities are not equally probable but they take on values restricted by the requirement that there exist sites where carbon-based life can evolve and by the requirements that the universe be old enough for it to have already done so. Unlike Carter they restrict the principle to carbon-based life, rather than just observers. A more important difference is that they apply the WAP to the fundamental physical constants such as the fine structure constant, the number of space-time dimensions, and the cosmological constant, topics that fall under Carter's SAP, strong anthropic principle. The universe must have those properties which allow life to develop within it at some stage in its history. This looks very similar to Carter's SAP. But unlike the case with Carter's SAP, the must is an imperative, as shown by the following three possible elaborations of the SAP, each proposed by Barrow and Tipler. There exists one possible universe designed with the goal of generating and sustaining observers. This can be seen as simply the classic design argument restated in the garb of contemporary cosmology. It implies that the purpose of the universe is to give rise to intelligent life, with the laws of nature and their fundamental physical constants set to ensure that life as we know it will emerge and evolve. Observers are necessary to bring the universe into being. Barrow and Tipler believe that this is a valid conclusion from quantum mechanics, as John Archibald Wheeler has suggested, especially via his idea that information is the fundamental reality, see it from bit, and his participatory anthropic principle which is an interpretation of quantum mechanics associated with the ideas of John von Neumann and Eugene Weiner. An ensemble of other different universes is necessary for the existence of our universe. By contrast, Carter merely says that an ensemble of universes is necessary for the SAP to count as an explanation. Modified anthropic principle. The problem of existence is only relevant to a species capable of formulating the question. 
prior to Homo sapiens intellectual evolution to the point where the nature of the observed universe and humans place within same spawned deep inquiry into its origins. The problem simply did not exist. The philosophers John Leslie and Nick Bostrom reject the Barrow and Tipler sap as a fundamental misreading of Carter. For Bostrom, Carter's anthropic principle just warns us to make allowance for anthropic bias, that is, the bias created by anthropic selection affects the necessity for observers to exist in order to get a result. He writes, many anthropic principles are simply confused. Some, especially those drawing inspiration from Brandon Carter's seminal papers, are sound, but they are too weak to do any real scientific work. In particular, I argue that existing methodology does not permit any observational consequences to be derived from contemporary cosmological theories. Though these theories quite plainly can be in a being tested empirically by astronomers, what is needed to bridge this methodological gap is a more adequate formulation of how observation selection effects are to be taken into account. Anthropic bias, introduction strong self-sampling assumption, each observer moment should reason as if it were randomly selected from the class of all observer moments in its reference class, analyzing in observer's experience into a sequence of observer moments helps avoid certain paradoxes, but the main ambiguity is the selection of the appropriate reference class. For Carter's WAP, this might correspond to all real or potential observer moments in our universe, for the SAP to all in the multiverse. Bostrom's mathematical development shows that choosing either too broad or too narrow a reference class leads to counterintuitive results, but he is not able to prescribe an ideal choice. According to Jürgen Schmidhuber, the anthropic principle essentially just says that the conditional probability of finding yourself in a universe compatible with your existence is always one. It does not allow for any additional non-trivial predictions such as gravity won't change tomorrow to gain more predictive power. Additional assumptions on the prior distribution of alternative universes are necessary. Playwright and novelist Michael Frayn describes a form of the strong anthropic principle in his 2006 book The Human Touch, which explores what he characterizes as the central oddity of the universe. It's the simple paradox. The universe is very old and very large. Humankind, by comparison, is only a tiny disturbance in one small corner of it, and a very recent one. Yet the universe is only very large and very old because we are here to say it is. And yet, of course, we all know perfectly well that it is what it is whether we are here or not.